Before we start the video, just a quick reminder that I do have a Discord server, so if you haven't yet, please join it. We can chat there, and also it's a good way for me to communicate with you in case something bad happens to the channel. If you're interested, the link to it is in the description. Yo, what's up guys, it's Tomorrow the Wolf 469 and welcome to a new Ninjago video. Today we are going to be ranking all of the sets coming this summer in 2021. Please keep in mind that everything I will say in this video is my own opinion. Let's get started. So at the bottom of the list we have Kai's Blade Cycle. Not a great set in my opinion. I mean it's 4 plus, what could you expect, but nothing here is exclusive, like for many things. According to Bricks by Mind, Legacy Wave 1 Kai has come in 16 sets at this point. So yeah, with these summer sets, Legacy Wave 1 Kai will be the third most common minifigure of all time. Crazy there, and also there's Epic Battle Ratla, which comes in the Epic Battle set. Not a great minifigure selection there, and also the Blade Cycle, oh, it doesn't really do it for me. I mean, we've had two versions before, the original and the Legacy remake that came out in 2019. And like I said before, this is a 4 plus remake, what could you expect? There's no real play function in it, apart from just moving it around. It would have been cool to pop out the Blades, but it seems like this set just doesn't have it. Cool side build, but not a great set in my opinion. At number 8, we have the final flight of Destiny's Bounty. Another 4 plus set, but no, it doesn't do it for me. Once again, none of the minifigures here are exclusive. The Ghost Warrior already came in 2 sets in the winter, and then there's a really big missed opportunity here. Instead of giving us proper Wave 3 suits, LEGO instead decided to give us 3 Wave 1 suits which have been out since 2019. Legacy Wave 1 Kai, Legacy Wave 1 J, and Legacy Wave 1 Zane. Come on, that's a really big missed opportunity. I think a lot of Ninjago fans would have been motivated to get this set if it had the Wave 3 suits. Honestly, in my opinion, LEGO would make a lot more money if it included these Wave 3 suits, but anyways, I'm not here to talk about the minifigures. The builds themselves aren't very interesting. I mean, this is supposed to represent a Bounty 2.0, and this version doesn't do it. The sale just isn't enough for me. I mean, it's okay, if you have younger siblings, then they might like it, but... Nah. The only thing that really interests me is the side build. I mean, it sort of represents sticks, but otherwise, not a great set in my opinion. At number 7, we have the Ninja Subspeeder. It's a controversial opinion, but I think that this car is better than the Jaywalker 1. I just really loved its function in the show where it could turn into a submarine and all. And honestly, the minifigure selection here is not bad. I mean, it doesn't have a great price per piece, but will you say no to two Scuba Ninja and two Mario Guards? Pretty good set, but it's not as important or detailed as the other ones that will be showing up later in the list. At number 6, we have Lloyd's Hydromech. A really great set in my opinion. I originally wasn't a very big fan of it, but after seeing its role in the show, wow. I just loved seeing the Hydromech in action, and I think that this set is very representative for Seabound. It appeared in quite a couple episodes, and if you just want an entrance set into the Seabound wave, I think this is a very good set. So yeah, I'd pick it up if I were you. Awesome set. At number 5, we have the Ultrasonic Raider. It's a pretty good set, but I do have some nitpicks. First of all, the two seats on the side. Since when did the Ultrasonic Raider have that? That annoys me there. Also, it looks very different from its counterpart in the show. I'm a person who prefers show accuracy, and I get it, Legacy is supposed to be different from what we see in the show, but... Uh, don't really like that. I mean, it's not a bad set. I think a lot of you will still like it. But well, those are my thoughts on the build. Legacy Zane being Titanium, don't like that there. I think he should have been kept as human. Don't know what's happening with Lego there, but well... The two highlight minifigures in this set are the Legacy Mesmo, yes! And then there's also Golden Zane. I think that will be a very big ploy for people getting this set, but otherwise, not bad. At number 4, we have the Water Dragon. The Water Dragon didn't have a very big role in the show, it only appeared in the finale, but I think this will be a great display piece for the final fight. Seabound spoilers incoming, but yeah, this dragon turned out to be Nia. It ticks me off that it didn't turn out to be Zippy, but 
I think its execution in the show was very well done. And honestly, this set gives me Griefbringer vibes. With the higher price and more pieces, I think this will be a very big dragon and it looks like it's going to be very detailed. So yeah, those traits may make it more attractive to people. I will say that this set looks awesome and I would get it, but I think I'm going to be broke. I won't be able to get it, but for any of you who will, enjoy it. I think it's going to be great. Coming into our top 3, we have the Temple of the Endless Sea. Honestly, what brings this set below the others is just its details. I don't think it's as detailed as the others. In the other sets, they just culminate into this one build, but then this set is broken down into different parts. But still, representing Wojira's temple, it's great. We get Wojira herself, which can detach from the temple. It gives me Great Devourer vibes from 2012. The builds are pretty good, Kai's pod and the temple. And honestly, a great minifigure selection. We have the exclusives Benthamar and Glutinous, very important characters in Seabound. And yeah, not bad. Including Energy Nia, Kalmar, and the non canon Scuba Kai, as well as the Mari Guards. I think that this set is awesome. It will definitely be one that I will be getting, and just having Ojira, it's very important. I think it's one that you guys should be getting, so yeah, awesome set. Our runner up is the Hydro Bounty. This set is awesome. I think it's the first $140 Ninjago set, and honestly, not bad. I love that it includes all of the ninja. It's a great mobile base for the ninja going underwater. I loved its role in the show, spanning from I think episode 3 to 12, including Kalmar's Cherry is awesome as well. And yeah, any set that has all of the ninja is welcome in my book. I think that this one will be great and it will be a fan favorite. I don't think there's much else to say here. Overall, fantastic set. And at the top of our list, number one is the Fire Dragon Attack. Awesome set. Unfortunately, I will not be getting it because I have the original. Having the original version just detracts me from getting the legacy version, but still, fantastic. It's very well detailed. It has a great minifigure selection. I mean, sure, Legacy Wave 1 Zane and Legacy Wave 1 Kai, we've gotten those before, as well as Whiplash, but the dragon itself, so detailed. I think it is a vast improvement from its 2011 counterpart. The yellowish orange mix in with the red is just great, and I love the replica for the 2011 Dragon Mold there in the head. Plus, Golden Nia, fantastic minifigure, why would you skip on that? An amazing set, which I think a lot of you will enjoy. So yeah, that makes my list. What is your ranking of the 2021 Summer Sets? Please let me know in the comments. As of the time of this recording, we are unsure if these sets will be releasing June 1st worldwide or if the American release date will be pushed to August 1st. I'm assuming that the latter option will happen, but we never know. Just stay tuned, I guess. But otherwise, yeah. Like I said before, leave your thoughts below and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye.